Thanks for telling me we're live, so I'm hoping we're live. Um, if you are here in this class, you have found it. Good job. <laughs> uh, we are Brief Birth and Wellness, and we are a birth center in Tulsa, and we work with healthy women who just want to give birth in a setting that is um, half like home and a little bit like the hospital. We're right in the middle there. We try to marry medical minded and home birth minded mamas um, in our center. So I'm Deirdre, I'm a doula there, and I also teach the essential oils classes. And so you found it if you're online. Um, this essential oils class is all about skincare. And so I'm gonna just share my journey a little bit about skincare and like how I've gotten to the place that I'm at right now. But I want to welcome you to my bathroom. <laughs> Quarantine, family being home, and the fact that in some of my older videos, people were saying that they couldn't hear me very well. And so I think being in like a smaller space, hopefully the echo's not too bad, but hopefully you can hear me better. And um, if you um, also, if you know Cassie, she's our receptionist at Brief Birth and Wellness, and she was saying, um, you should try to do a live video in like every room of your house. <laughs> and I was like, the bathroom would be interesting. <laughs> but here we are in the bathroom talking about skincare, why not, right? <laughs> so, all right. Um, so we're just going to start the class for the people that watch the replay. And I'm going to start with my story. So. My story is probably a lot like your stories. Um, started my teenage years with a lot of acne, um, a lot of acne that was probably um, genetic, um, and then just kind of progressed from teenager to like young adult thinking, why isn't my face clearing up? I don't understand. Um, and then just kind of like being thrust right into motherhood. And so um, I think I got pregnant at age 24 with my first daughter. And um, all the hormones, right? <laughs> Postpartum, breastfeeding, like all the hormones. Um, so after that, I think I dealt with a lot of hormonal acne um, through like my 20s. And then I was like, you know, surely by the time I'm 30, my face will clear up and it didn't really <laughs> and I just kind of got used to looking in the mirror every morning and going what's my face gonna look like today I don't know um, because it was just kind of always a surprise and so probably eight years ago um, well hold on I want to show you a picture of my face at its very worst so this is when I was probably eight months postpartum with my last baby. He's 10 now, so that was give or take 10 years ago. <laughs> and um, this was just the worst of the worst. So lots of acne, lots of blemishes, and a lot of redness. Um, this was with makeup on, so without makeup it looked a lot worse. Um, and I just wasn't really happy at this moment in my life. I wasn't happy with my face. I wasn't happy with how little of control I had over my skin. And um, I didn't really know what to do. So I started with diet. And diet was the first place that I turned. And I just kind of started eliminating things that I knew that probably weren't good for me or that were probably on the allergy side. Like maybe I wasn't allergic to them, but they were upsetting my stomach somehow, um, dairy being one of those. And I started eliminating things that I just, I just flat out knew they weren't good for me, right? Like soda, <laughs> like just got rid of soda right away. Um, and then from that point on, just kind of started my journey. And um, when my last, when my youngest son was two, that's when I found Young Living and Right away, I think I went to my first class and I was like, what can I do for acne, right? Because that's what I wanted an answer for. That's why I was at the class, um, deep down inside, right? And um, 
they had this thing called acne serum when I first signed up and it's not on the, it's not a product anymore, but um, I tried it right away because I was like so desperate for an answer. Um, so what I've learned in my, I don't know how long I've been a member for, eight years? Um, what I've learned in eight years is a lot and that's what this class is all about. I'm here to just like hopefully shine a little bit of light on it, help you through your journey and just kind of give you some of the tips and tricks that I've learned along the way. Um, and we can t talk afterwards because every person's story is so different. And every person has completely different reasons for the things that are going on in their skin. So after that picture was taken, um, my face got a lot better. Um, and just with diet and um, adding in Young Living, but it still wasn't perfect, right? It wasn't like the face that everyone wants. And a couple years ago, I actually went to a dermatologist and I was diagnosed with rosacea. And that is also genetic. And I had never heard of it before. I was like totally clueless. I had to go home and do some research. And rosacea is just a reddening of certain patches of the skin based on, um, irritable things that can cause it to get worse. So like if I get in the heat, if I eat foods that really don't agree with me, if I eat like really hot soup, um, certain parts of my face will just get redder. Um, and so that coupled with like my history gives me a ton of compassion for anyone watching with any kind of skin issues. Um, I know what you're going through and I know how hopeless it can feel and um, I hope that something in this class gives you a little bit of hope. So, <clears throat> why Young Living? Um, when you're dealing with skin issues and things that are just very like sensitive in the body like the liver and the kidneys and your major organs, like you really want to make sure that your essential oils are pure, 100% pure therapeutic. You don't want anything added to your bottle of lavender, right? So if you are um, taking my class and then thinking, I'm sure I can just cook in with these essential oils at blah, 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 because they're cheaper there, um, I would highly dis, what's the word? <laughs> I would Disen highly disencourage you. <laughs> that's not even a word, right? Discourage. That's the word. <laughs> I would highly discourage you um, because there is not a lot of FDA um, oversight on some of the oils, the labels, right? So the label could say 100% pure, but then in, um, it can also say not for internal use. And so if there's things in the bottle that are not good for internal use, then the oil probably isn't 100% pure. So Young Living has Vitality oils, and those are the oils that can go in the body. Um, they've been approved by the FDA, and they are 100% pure. Um, so I say all of that to say, please do not take this information and then go buy products that have cheap fillers or even chemicals in them. Um, because it's not going to help your skin. And I would hate for anyone to message me and say, my skin got worse. And then I'm gonna say, did you use Young Living? Um, I'm really, really sh like a firm believer in putting in products that are quality because you get what you pay for. And that is why I chose Young Living. So, um, also another thing to think about is the skin, is the largest organ in our body, right? So we have organs, but the skin is the largest one and it happens to be the one that we see. And so um, what you put on your skin, like this is not an internal oil, lavender, but if I put it on my skin, it's going to be um, eventually in my body, right? Does that make sense? What goes on my skin eventually gets in my body. So my liver is going to have to process what I put on my skin. My kidneys are gonna to have to process what I put on my skin. 
And so if I wouldn't put this oil in my mouth, I wouldn't put it on my skin. Because everything, we have to think of the body as like a synergistic machine here. Um, and so what we use on our skin goes in our body and it comes out somehow, <laughs> right? Okay, so that's a really important point. Um, all of the, our products are, um, like our skincare products, all of them have essential oils in them. And so um, Young Living is not gonna put an essential oil in a face lotion that shouldn't be going on the face. They're gonna put the oils in the lotions and the sprays and the hydrosols that are good for your skin and good for your face, right? So you can trust the stuff that they have on the market. Okay, so I'm gonna do a little DIY really fast because that's kind of like the boring part of the class and now we're getting to the fun part. <laughs> so, um, Lavaderm is our after sun spray. So you spend too much time in the sun, maybe you don't apply your sunscreen as much as you should and <laughs> your skin is not feeling so great. Lavaderm would be this, the spray that you would use on that skin. Um, and you're gonna have to kind of go with me here because some of these words are a little bit um, in lingo. They're a little uh, Sherlock Holmesy, a little, <laughs> you know, if you get my drift. So, um, Lavaderm happens to be out of stock right now, which is such a bummer. I know, super sad. Um, so we're gonna make our own DIY after sun spray. This goes really fast in my house, and so that's why I'm out of it. <laughs> um, even though I tell my kids to wear their sunscreen all the time. So here's my recipe, and I'll post this on the class page after this, uh, after this is over so that you don't have to feverishly write it down or anything. Okay, so in my two ounce bottle, I'm going to take some vitamin E oil and it's going to be an eighth or sorry, a fourth of a teaspoon of vitamin E oil. And if you know me, you also know that I don't really measure things. So you just kind of go with it and we're not perfectionists around here. So, and this like fingernail thing is really, really strange to try to get it in the bottle, but it works. Okay, so a little bit of vitamin E because vitamin E is great for the skin. Um, we're also going to put some witch hazel. You can get witch hazel at any of the grocery stores, any of the whole food stores. You're going to do a tablespoon of witch hazel. And again, I'm not going to measure, I'm just going to squeeze it in there. It's all good. Okay, then we're going to do um, a tablespoon of carrier oil. And carrier oil is just any kind of fatty oil that can help um, the essential oil stay on top of the skin, right? So it's not going to dilute it in the fact that it's not as strong. It's just gonna help the essential oil slow down being absorbed by the skin, so, which means it's gonna help it sit on top of the skin longer, which means it's gonna help the skin, okay? So some good carrier oils are jojoba, um, olive oil, coconut oil. Um, Lisa's is giving me a look right now. Nope, you're fine. <laughs> And, um, but I like jojoba for the face specifically. Coconut can be like a little bit um, clog pouring, clog pouring, clogging to the pores. <laughs> and um, we're gonna put one tablespoon in here, okay? Look at that gorgeous color. That's about a tablespoon, there we go. And all these things can be found on Amazon, okay? Um, and then we are going to put some aloe vera juice 
And juice is really important because when you're spraying this, you want it to like mist out in a fine spray. And so if you do the aloe vera gel, it's gonna be more like you're gonna have to rub it on and it's not gonna shoot through your misting spray. But that's fine too, the gel is fine too. So then with this um, aloe vera, we're gonna do an eighth of a cup, which is basically just gonna fill up the bottle. And you're just gonna leave a little bit of room for your essential oils. Okay? All right. So the essential oils that I'm gonna add to this little recipe are lavender and peppermint. Um, why lavender, why peppermint? Lavender is extremely healing to skin that has been in the sun. And so any kind of skin that's overly red, I would use lavender on. So you're gonna do like five drops of lavender and then you're gonna use a little bit of peppermint. And peppermint is gonna be really strong, but it's gonna help cool off some of that red hot skin. And it's gonna be really cooling and soothing to like the, the feeling of, you know, warmth. But not too much peppermint because peppermint can actually feel a little burny if you get too much of it, because it's kind of um, like that on the skin. If you just put it on your skin, you'll know what I mean. But, um, and then you're just gonna kind of mix that up. And when my kids come home from the pool, they know to grab the lavender spray. And I can just keep refilling that with all of my DIY stuff. So, I love this recipe. I'll post it on the page later. But if you're not into DIYs, lavender, Young Loving has it, it's great. Um, the other spray that's just like lavender is called lavender as well but it's green this one comes out a little bit more um, thick and white on the skin and it's a little bit more of like a heavy duty spray so it's going to be more for like serious pain and dryness you could also use it after the pool um, but this one's like for more of a serious uh, skin irritation got it like insect bites um, minor burns, minor cuts, things like that. Um, this is really nice too. So those two we love, we never run out of, except when we go out of stock. <laughs> okay, so the key to good skin, and this is really, really basic guys, but it is really, really hard to put into practice. The key to good skin is having good gut health. What do I mean by gut health? I mean, um, you don't want to be having a ton of bowel issues, constipation, gas, um, all of those things are probably signals that your gut's not functioning the way that it should be. And so you really want to look into your gut health. Are you taking a probiotic? Are you um, using enzymes? Enzymes are key for me to good digestion. Enzymes help you digest your food they used to be found in the soil. And so plants would grow in the soil, enzymes would be soaked up, the, the plants would soak up the enzymes, and then um, you would eat the plants and then you would have enzymes already in the food. So fast forward 100 years and none of our soil has enzymes in it anymore because it's been overused and overplanted and all those things. So Young Living has fantastic enzymes. You can find them all over the place, but these are gonna help you digest your food if you have trouble or sensitivity to certain foods. Maybe you don't have an allergy, but they're just harder to digest. Like for some people, raw veggies are hard to digest. And so I would suggest an enzyme because your body really needs raw vegetables and just vegetables in general. <laughs> so. Um, when you make real food choices, your body understands what it's eating and it's going to be e easier to digest and your digestion is going to be healthier and it's going to move faster. And all of those things equal better skin health. Okay. Um, also you want to avoid any foods that are inflammatory. So what is an inflammatory food? Sugar, a lot of sugar, 
I love sugar. It's really hard for me not to eat sugar. Um, I'm preaching to myself right now. But um, the sugar in our bodies causes inflammation. Inflammation causes redness. And so if you see a lot of redness in your face, you want to think about cutting down the sugar in the forms of processed sugar, alcohol, and even natural sugars um, can do it too, like in fruits and stuff. Not that I'm saying not to eat fruits, but everybody's different. So you just have to learn your body. You have to learn what foods are great for you, what foods are hmm, and what foods are like no way Jose, right? Um, I learned after like a trial run of not eating meat for a year that meat is kind of like mmm for me. Like I can have a little bit of meat, but if I have a lot of meat at every meal every day, my body is not healthy, my digestion does not like it, my face does not like it. And so when I cut back on the meat and started eating more plant-based, my face liked my, my digestion better. <laughs> so um, that's really kind of my motivation for all that. Also, um, if you want to avoid, you want to avoid allergen foods that like most of the population is allergic to. So dairy, a lot of people don't process dairy very well. So switching to almond milk, coconut milk, um, things like that. And gluten, you really want to test out and see, does my body like gluten or not? I mean, it's kind of a, that one's kind of more of a cut and dry one. And then also you really need all of your water. Like all the water they tell you to drink every day, you really need it and you really need it for skin health. And so if you're not drinking water, um, we have some great vitality drops that makes your water taste better and kind of tricks you into thinking you're not drinking water. <laughs> but um, water is key to skin health and it's gonna help you look moisturized and more plump and less dry and all of those things. And so, um, especially in the winter time, if you deal with dry skin, or if you're worried about maybe some wrinkles, um, make sure your water intake is really, really good. It's really up there. Okay, so we're gonna move on to hormones. And hormones can be another tricky part of skin health because your hormones are what make your skin kind of elastic and like plump and like soft and kind of, you know, as we age, our skin kind of gets um, saggy and <laughs> sad. Um, and so hormones are going to help with that process. And as we age, our hormones decrease and decline in the body. And so sometimes adding hormones in the body can help your skin, especially if you deal with hormonal acne and so some of the essential oils that we have are going to help your body um, in the area of hormones and I have an entire text class on this and it's like way more than I want to get into right now in this class so if you want to take my hormones text class uh, you text the word hormones to a number that I will give you and I can set you up on that really easy the class just starts automatically and we can learn all about hormones in our skin. Um, but <clears throat> if you have a teenager that's struggling with their skin and struggling with certain breakouts in certain areas, you can always look up the Chinese face map. And that's, um, you can find it on Pinterest, you can find it on Google. And it'll show you, like it'll give certain parts of the face for certain parts of the body that might need some support, right? So like hormones are down on the chin and like along the neckline and the chin line and stress is kind of more up here on the forehead and and then it gives like other places and other organs <laughs> for the rest of the face. So um, look at the Chinese face map, look at your teenager's face, compare the two and then kind of maybe talk to me about that once you do a little homework, a little research. Um, but a lot of blemishes can come from just being hormonally imbalanced. And I think during my 20s when I was having babies, that was definitely some of the things that I was struggling with. Um, Young Living makes a fantastic um, supplement. It's called Progestins Plus. It's for women. Angel, if you want to get it out of my cabinet, it's right behind you. 
Um, progesterone is one of those hormones that women need. It helps us feel balanced. It helps with our metabolism. It helps us sleep. It is one of my favorite. I use it all the time. My bottle's almost gone. Um, but this is like the uh, supplement you would use in the last half of your cycle. And it is a really, really good one, especially if you're over the age of 30. <laughs> Just for hormone supplementation and hormone balance. Um, and so if you want to talk more about Progestins Plus, I'm here for it. This is one of my favorites. Um, it's helped me so much. So turn the um, AC down. Okay, so the next um, thing we want to do is talk about the liver. So the liver helps balance your hormones. So having a liver that's, that's um, healthy and strong and not being bogged down by a bunch of chemicals is really, really important, right? The liver also processes all of the toxins out of the body. So the less toxins you put into your body, into your environment, the less work your liver has to do, right? So um, there's, oh, it's like um, there's a, a fact out there that says a woman, an average woman comes into contact with 80 chemicals before breakfast. Before breakfast, 80 chemicals. And so if you think about your liver and how much work it has to do with processing all of those things that we clean with, all of the things that we um, maybe clean our kitchens with, clean our laundry with, um, clean our bathrooms with, um, all of the makeup that we use, all of the toothpaste and the mouthwash and the hand soap, all of those things. That's a lot of chemicals, a lot of toxins. I've worked really hard to get all of the toxins out of my house. Um, and that's a whole nother class. <laughs> it's called the Thieves Cleaning Class. And um, I did that for my face. I did that for my skin because I knew that my liver was not processing very well all of the toxins um, that were in my house. So if you want to know more about um, plant-based cleaning, Thieves Household Cleaner, I'd love to talk to you about that. I also have a text class um, on that. And so the skin is like one of those things that just kind of encompasses like all of life, you know? And so when you work really hard to take care of your skin, you're actually working really hard to take care of your family and all of the things that go around that because it just, it's, we're talking about diet, we're talking about food, we're talking about household toxins and cleaning. I mean, it's, it's a whole like lifestyle, right? So, um, let's get to the essential oils that are good for the skin because I know that's what you're here for, <laughs> but I have to like preface all of it because if you just buy one bottle of essential oil and you think it's going to clear up my skin, it's really not. <laughs> you really have to work in all of the areas together um, so that your skin has and your liver and all of it has kind of a fighting chance to work together. Um, but for right now, we will talk about the oils. So, Asa, did you turn the AC down? Mm -hmm. Good, you're dead. Okay, so my first two are frankincense, frankincense, frankincense. Okay, guys, frankincense comes in the premium starter kit. And so if you got that kit, you have frankincense. This is my top oil for skin health. Um, frankincense was used in bottle times and it is fantastic for all the things, all the things, all of them, frankincense. The one that's just like frankincense in like chemical constituency and like properties would be Elemi, I'm not really sure how to say this one, um, E-L-E-M-I, but that one is just like frankincense. And so if you have one of these, it's kind of like having both of them, but these two are going to be great for the aging skin. Also really good for dark spots and if you're working on some of those lines, um, frankincense. So what I do is 
I can add frankincense to any of my moisturizers. Um, it's, it's pretty gentle. I mean, it can have a little bit of a bite to it if you get it too close to your eyes, which, I mean, let's be honest, that's where the lines are. <laughs> the smile lines. But um, you really want to just get frankincense on your skin with a little bit of a carrier oil or a little bit of a moisturizer or something like that so that it stays on the top layer of the skin instead of just absorbing right away into the body, right? So these two are fantastic. Frankincense is my number one choice. Um, the next one would be lavender. You also have lavender if you have the Pyramid Starter Kit. You need lavender. It's the Swiss Army knife of all of the oils. It is so good for your skin. It is in every single skin recipe. It is for every single skin type. So dry skin, oily skin, blemish skin, um, aging skin, sensitive skin, lavender, lavender, lavender. Um, lavender would be the one that I would recommend for any kind of infant skincare. So if you're gonna be making some kind of moisturizer for your infant or your baby, your toddler, lavender would be my very first choice. It is so gentle. Um, it's in all of our baby line, all of our seedlings line. But lavender is gonna tone the skin. It's great for if you get too much sun. Also, um, it's it comes in like all of our skincare products. And so if you only have two oils in your starter kit for skin, frankincense and lavender, you have the most important ones. <laughs> and so don't feel like I have to go out and buy all of these other oils because lavender and frankincense will get it done for you. Um, so some of my other really, really good, which one's next? Oh, this one I don't actually have to show you, sandalwood. Sandalwood is great. It's also a biblical oil. Um, my kids and I scan for it all the time when we do our little iToby scan, which I scan, um, I use my Toby all the time, but if you're on my team, you get a free scan whenever you want. You just call me, you come over, you get scanned. And so um, sandalwood and jasmine, they're both very hydrating. And so if you buy those oils, you can add them to any of your DIY products, any of your moisturizers, put it on at night. Um, but I wanna show you a serum that I made. So this is like my glow serum. And really, it's all of these oils that I'm talking about in a dropper. And then what do I add to it? I add jojoba as a carrier oil. And then I add a little bit of rose hip. Rose hip is great too for the face. So these two are carrier oils. These are fatty. They're going to help the essential oils stay on top of the skin. And then I'm going to add all of these essential oils that I'm talking about to this little tiny bottle. And then I'm going to put this um, glow serum on my skin at night after I wash my face because it's pretty heavy. Um, it's going to moisturize really, really well, but it's going to stay on my face for like a good eight hours and I'm not putting any makeup on over it and it's rejuvenating the skin. So get you some glow serum. It's worth it. Um, you will find recipes for glow serum all over Instagram. It like totally blew up last month in May because Young Living had a sale on all of the skincare oils because it was Mother's Day and apparently mothers just really like nice skin. <laughs> and so um, you can find glow serum recipes everywhere. But um, another oil that's really, really great is rose oil. There are 22 pounds of rose petals in this bottle of rose oil. 22 pounds of petals. That's a lot of petals. And so this bottle is very expensive, but I use it a lot for my face and I use it in my glow serum because it's so good for the skin. So rose is great for dry skin, which is my skin, dry. Also for aging and um, eczema and so if those are things you deal with rose might be a really good choice it is very expensive but what i like about young living is that i buy the bottle and i can make so many recipes out of it because i diy everything and um 
It can go in my dry shampoo. It can go in my toothpaste. It can go in my, um, what else, Ainsley? Who knows? <laughs> I'm drawing a blank right now. But I love, I love, love, love making my own skin care products. The other one is Ylang Ylang. Um, Ylang Ylang is great because it balances your skin. And so if you feel like half of my face is dry and the other half is oily, Ylang Ylang is going to help balance the whole face. It's not over drying, but you need to really be careful that with what you're washing with because you don't want to be over drying your skin, period. Um, when you suck all the moisture out of your face, your, your oil glands, your sebum glands, are going to start overproducing oil. And then you're going to have oily skin or oily clogged pores because you sucked all that moisture out. And so your skin's trying to keep up with how often you're over drying your skin with face washes that might not be the right one for your skin. So I found when I wash with Mira cleansing oil, like this is an actual oil and it cleanses, it takes my makeup off. My face is so soft, it is not over dried. And I don't feel like it's like, oh my gosh, get me some moisturizer right now. Like when I used to wash with um, cheap grocery store face wash, um, I would wash and then it would feel like my face was about to crack. Like it was so dry and it was like, oh, give me my moisturizer right now. Like I can't handle it. <laughs> um, this is not the case with the mirror cleansing oil. I love it for dry skin. Um, and then the Ylang Ylang oil, essential oil, because that's not going to over dry your skin either. Um, the next one is Neroli. It is going to restore and regenerate the skin. And Neroli is great for stretch marks. And so we have a spray. It looks a lot like this. It's not called Lavaderm. It's called Clariderm. And we have a spray for stretch marks. And so I always like to mention it when I'm teaching at the Breathe class with my pregnant ladies because stretch marks, <laughs> right? Um, and so Clariderm is great for stretch marks and it's also great for the perineum after birth. But Neroli is um, great for stretch marks as well. Um, chamomile, the, both of the chamomiles um, are great for the skin. They're nourishing. They work on blemishes, um, great for dryness and damaged skin. So if you've been out in the sun a lot, I grew up in Colorado back in the 80s. Sunscreen wasn't a big deal. It was like, who cares? I'll just get burnt and it'll be fine. And so my face was not very well taken care of as a kid <laughs> or a teenager. Um, so damaged skin, uh, chamomile is great for that. So vetiver, cedarwood, patchouli, and myrrh. Those four oils are extremely thick. Like you're gonna turn the bottle over. Here's my myrrh. You're gonna turn the bottle over and it's gonna take a long time to get this out of the bottle. Um, but if you wanna feel the myrrh, I wish you could feel it. I wish you were in person. But it is so thick and nourishing and hydrating um, so vetiver, cedarwood, patchouli, and myrrh are four oils I would recommend for dry skin or winter skin. So sometimes in the winter, my skin goes super dry, like more dry than the summertime. And you want some really thick oils that are going to kind of help protect your skin from the wind and the cold and the chapping and things like that. And so these are the oils I would use in my winter glow serum because they're going to help kind of hold that moisture into your skin against the elements a little bit more. Um, and then carrot, carrot oil, carrot seed oil. So Young Loving sells this one, super cheap. And that one's going to add a little bit of elasticity to the skin. Um, carrot is going to help with any kind of skin patches that you have and also aging skin. Okay, so carrots, not one that you would normally think of, but we love it. Um, geranium is great for oily skin. I don't have oily skin. 
I've tried it on my skin. It's too much for my sensitive skin, for my rosacea sensitivities. So what you want to do all the time before you use an oil all over your face is you want to check it. Um, you can use it on the inside of your arm. You can try it on your neck, your chest. You can try a little bit on like a spot on your face, um, but you just want to check it and make sure that it's not going to burn, um, that it's just not too much, right? And But geranium is great for brightening the skin. And so if you have oily skin and you want it to just be brighter, whiter maybe, like a little bit just like pop a little bit more, geranium would be a great oil for that. Okay, so tea tree and manuka are kind of in the same oil family. We all know what tea tree oil is. Manuka is like its cousin. Um, guys, Young Living came out with manuka last summer and I was like, okay, it's a new oil, whatever. And I tried it and I fell in love. <laughs> I love Manuka so much that I have three bottles of it. Um, my skin loves Manuka. Like when you find an oil that your skin loves, you know it because your skin just like, like shows you how much it loves it. Um, Manuka is great for my rosacea. So this part of my face, Manuka goes on every single night. It's in my glow serum. Um, Manuka is also great for like going underneath the armpits for that like natural deodorant type issue. It's going to help with like um, antifungal type things. Same with tea tree. Um, also really good for oily skin. So if you haven't tried Manuka, I would highly recommend it. It's one of my favorites. Um, and then if you're like, I don't know what my skin type is, or can you message me a few more oils to try? Like, let's chat. I would love to message you. Um, let's talk about sun sensitivity though. There are a few oils you should never use on your skin. Now, I wouldn't, I'm not going to say never use on your skin. I'm just going to say never use on your face. Um, because they're sensitive to the sun and they're going to make your skin more sensitive to the sun and probably burn a little bit faster. And so any of the citrus oils, tangerine, lemon, orange, grapefruit, do not put those on your skin and then go out into the sun. You need to give your skin about 48 hours if you accidentally put one of those on your skin before you go out into the sun. Um, do not, <laughs> don't do it, okay? Also bergamot is a sun sensitive oil. Um, and then you want to think about some of the hotter oils that you don't want to use on your face. So hotter oils would be cinnamon. It's just a hot flavor. It's a spicy flavor, right? Wintergreen, black pepper, basil, um, citronella, cumin, wintergreen. These are all really spicy oils. They're great for other things. A lot of like pain and discomfort and swelling and stuff like that, but not for your face, right? So stay away from the hot oils, stay away from citrus oils, the sun sensitive ones, and bergamot. Um, but you can use some of those sun sensitive oils in your um, hair to lighten it up a little bit in the summertime, like a little natural, natural highlights. That's okay. Just make sure it doesn't get on your face or even on your scalp because it could, you know, your scalp skin too. So <laughs> you just want to protect your scalp. Okay. So I'm going to show you some of my other favorite products and we are going to end this class. So if you have any questions, now would be a great time to ask them. But some of my other favorite products include the Orange Blossom Facial Wash. This stuff is great for oily skin. Sometimes I'll um, alternate the Orange Blossom Facial Wash with the Mira Cleansing Oil. My teenagers use this one. Um, my husband could use this one if he wanted, but this one is great just for like everyday skin cleansing. I really love that one. It also has like a uh, moisturizer that matches it, so you could do orange blossom and orange moisturizer. Um, another product that I love, oh, the Royal Hawaiian Sandalwood Hydrosol. It is great. <laughs> it is so good. 
even my 14 year old likes it guys <laughs> it's awesome and i say that with love but usually they don't like the products that i i try to give them you know they're like no mom <laughs> But um, this one is great. So it hydrates and it moisturizes. It kind of acts like a toner on my face. So I'll get out of the shower and I'll just spritz my face really fast with this and it like tones the skin. So it's gonna balance the pH. pH is really, really important because the skin has a pH and you wanna try to maintain that pH. The body has a pH, the gut has a pH and you wanna try to maintain that pH, right? So if you get too acidic, your gut's not going to be happy and neither is your skin. If you get too um, alkaline, your gut's not going to be happy and neither is your skin. So this is a perfectly balanced pH toner, which is why I use it. And then for my gut, I'm going to use Lifetime probiotics that are going to help balance my pH. Okay, so pH right here. These are great. Two of my favorite ones. Um, we also have like this dry skin serum. It's a beauty serum. So it's a bunch of essential oils for the face. And then the carrier oil, I believe, is sesame oil. I'm not sure about that. Let's see. So there's cedarwood, avocado oil. That's great. Blue cypress, rosehip, jojoba, lavender, wolfberry royal hawaiian sandalwood um so this one is for dry skin i use this one more in the winter time because in the winter time my dry skin gets worse but um you can use it for other things too like any kind of patches on the body that are dry or um you know people get patches everywhere for dry skin um and then we have okay I don't know where to go. I don't know where to go next. I love it all. We have an acne spot treatment. Um, this is just to put right on the spot and it's just like the acne cream in the um, grocery store. Except, of course, it has essential oils in it, so that's awesome. Um, the mint exfoliating scrub is one of my favorites. It's really important to exfoliate your skin every now and then because there's there's dead skin that just kind of needs to come off and your skin wants to regenerate, right? So exfoliate like maybe once a week. It'll help your makeup go on smoother. Um, but this one's really great because it's peppermint and it kind of like leaves like this cool tingling sensation and it's great on the skin. I love our exfoliating. And then these are all of our creams and moisturizers. Um, they all have essential oils in them. So there's body butter. Body butter is really, really thick. It's really, really heavy, really, really greasy. Um, but I used it during COVID a lot because we were all washing our hands so much and I just got like this super dry patch along this spot on my hand just from like washing and washing and washing. This really took care of that. This is a really heavy duty body butter. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it for the face. Um, and then we got some hand and body lotion. This one's a little bit lighter, Genesis. Um, it's good for your legs, good for your arms. Um, I do use it on my face every now and then. But this is the one I use the most on my face, sandalwood, because it has sandalwood essential oil in it. It's really, really good. I make my kids some facial moisturizer with this too. And last but not least, we also have some deodorant because guys, deodorant is a big deal. You don't want to be using this stuff with all the toxins in it. Um, this one's okay. It doesn't smell the best, but it really does cut down some of the sweat factor. So that's bonus and it's super natural. So you're not going to be getting any toxins if you switch your deodorant. Um, but one of the last things I want to talk about is some of the DIYs that I've done. So body sprays. Those are like a really big deal in high school, especially among the athletes. <laughs> so the athletes after practice like to smell good, right? So they all bring out their body sprays and 
I mean, let's face it, body sprays do not have the best ingredients in them. So I made my daughter her own body spray. So what we did is we just get these off of Amazon. They're glass, which is important. Um, or you could use like aluminum. And we just make our own body spray. So we get a little bit of water, some either vodka or witch hazel, up to you, whichever one. That's important because it helps the water and the essential oils mix. And then you could get some high quality vanilla because vanilla is going to make it smell like sweet almost. And then you're just going to add the essential oils that you like to smell. So is it going to be stress away? Is it going to be peace and calming? Is it going to be peppermint, lavender? Like how do you want to smell after practice? Let's make your own body spray. So this one's called Rendezvous. Um, I got this off of Melissa Pepping's website. And um, this one has rose, bergamot, orange, and lavender. It's fantastic. It's really, really nice smell. But then my son wanted like more of the eucalyptus mint flavor. So we did like some stress away and um, some mint, like spearmint maybe. And then a lot of eucalyptus because he really likes that smell. So you can like literally DIY your way through life, making all of your body body creams, body sprays, all of it. Um, you could make a cologne, you could make, um, I use Roland's all the time as perfume. I mean, really like you're replacing half of your cabinet. So if you just get the ingredients and you just start practicing and diving in, you're gonna find what you like. You're gonna find um, different ways to make different things for your family members to replace some of the toxins in your life. So. Ainsley, do we have any questions? No questions. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and end this class. Thank you for hanging out with me and message me later if you have any questions.